up. Earl Shores coming up next. We're going to talk electric football. Get ready. Slip on some of your old stuff. Put on your old music. Get your old bell bottoms, your corduroy pants, your wide tie. Because we're going old school next. Electric football talk coming up. Here on Head for Home, Fox Sports Radio. 1400. 100, 100, 100, 100. All righty, welcome back. 29 minutes after 6 o'clock, heading for home, Fox Sports Radio 1400, foxsportstexturecanon.com. We're going to jump on the Lone Star Custom Home Hotline this afternoon. And and I promised you guys an hour ago, we're going old school, old timey. But I'll tell you what, you can still get some fun from the old school stuff. Earl Shores jumping on live with us this afternoon. He's the man who wrote... I don't even know a way to describe it. The about perfect book concerning <laughs> our childhood love for electric football. Earl Shores, appreciate you joining us again, sir. Good to talk to you. Oh, thanks so much for having me back. And wow, what an intro! I I don't know what to say. Thank you. I tell you what, when you sent me this book, I had no idea. The mailman, I think he had to wear a girdle to bring this book to me. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't start out like that when we when Rody and I started it up. It was you know many years ago. We thought maybe it would just be a price guide and a little more. But the, the more we dug into it, and the more we talked to people who were involved with the story, um, there was a great story there. And as we put the pieces together, realizing that um, it, it wasn't a single story that it had the NFL had to be tied in, television had to be tied in, and popular culture. It's like electric and what it did in 1967 and for the next decade, it could have only happened at that time. That was the perfect time for us to have an NFL on our bedroom floors. I'll be honest with you. I've been a history teacher for 20 years. (laughs) I've picked up history books that weren't as detailed as this thing is about world wars. (laughs) This is a 650-page, i got a probably labor of love is going to be the way you're going to describe this, isn't it? Yes, it was, and it was one of those things, too, that when we started, uh, it, you know, it was the late 90s and the Internet still in its infancy, and just trying to find out what the first nationally broadcasted football game, what the NFL championship game was, we found, like, three different things back in the day, I mean, in the infancy of the Internet, so it really made us realize we had to dig down to the sources of what we were writing about, even if it was just electric football, if I'm saying the 1951 uh, National Football League Championship was the first nationally televised game. I had to go back that up because I found books from the NFL. I found Sports Illustrated books where things were not correct. So, yes, we just bored down to the core of everything. Earl, I wanted to ask you about the fact that you talk about the Internet or the lack thereof when you first started with this and when obviously the product was in its infancy. There wasn't PDF files, there wasn't email, there wasn't a readily available computers to store all the different ads and models, and yet you look through this book and you can see the different ads of the eleven ninety nine, twelve ninety nine, the prices and the ads that ran in not only newspapers but magazines. Who had the brilliant idea of one to keep up with all of it, but then it's still intact and very, you know, it's visual pleasing. It's not like it doesn't appear that it's from 63. Who had that idea to keep up with all that, and how did you get that in this book? Uh, how do we get all the information for the book? Yes. Like, like, like you said, finding those ads and things like that. I'm sorry, that, that was the question? Yes. Yeah, um, really, the other thing that slowed us down, too, and we would be writing it, and this was, again, the emphasis of the Internet, it seemed like each year, uh, as we went along, like in the early 2000s, much more information came out. So we would have written something, and then all of a sudden we, w- we would find a place where we'd discover these ads, and we'd have to go back and redo it again. So each year, uh, it's just amazing amounts of information came out on the Internet to find out about electric football and to find out that, you know, all the places in Texas and all the places that sold the game, it, it's just it, it emphasizes how popular the game was to go through an old newspaper and see a Thanksgiving Day ad, multiple Thanksgiving Day ads for NFL electric football games back in the late 60s. I, I've got to imagine actually getting the copies of this book when you finally got them back from the printer. You just had to have that whole 
whew, I can't believe it's done thing. It was. I mean, for Rody and I, it was a sense of relief as much as anything. We were ready for, oh, we're ready to pop the cork and all that, but it was just a, a giant sense of relief. And I would be amiss in not mentioning um, our designer, who when I talked to you like a year ago, we had just met Michael Cronenberg. And uh, what he did over the last year of inserting our photos, I mean, he made a dream book for us. He, ma- he made another story with the photos. We had the, the text story, but, and we had some photos, but he made a story taking our photos and placing them, like, in the perfect places. And so, as he said, you can go through the book, and you don't even have to read everything that's in there right first time through, but there's a whole lot to see with the catalog pages, the pictures of the games. Um, so that made it bigger, but we made a decision early on. We, we wanted the photos. We thought it was beautiful, and we were going to make the book that we wanted to make. What was your favorite thing about making this book? What do you enjoy, or did you take most from uh, finishing this project? Um, I enjoy talking to our sources, um, and as you read the the back. It's like many of them passed away, so I got to talk to some of the people who were you know, some of the great toy men um, of our time, and to think that I was a child sitting on a floor with a Sears catalog looking at a Tudor football game and a Monroe hockey game, and eventually I got to talk to both of the men who made those games. That's really um, a really neat thing, and just the fact that we got to tell uh, Norman Sass' story and, and to meet him, uh, that really stands out as, as you know what we accomplished here. And, of course, a year ago, that's the reason we actually connected the first place was the passing of, of Norman Sass, who really was the father of this whole thing, wasn't he? Yes, he was. I mean, he invented the game and and got it out in 1949, and then he was the one who was able to uh, identify Lee Payne, the designer who wasn't even on his payroll at the time, as somebody he wanted to work with his game, and he let Lee Payne go on the game, and Lee Payne was the one who came up with the 3D figures, the the great-looking fields, and eventually the NFL-painted players. I mean, they were all that thing. So, yes, Norman was was quite a person. All right. Now, now most of us are old and and haven't seen our electric football games in forever and we think they're probably gone into history but you're going to tell me that they're not gone and and you can still find electric football and i'm better than that you can find guys like us who, who still would play it right um uh, yeah uh, a guy named doug strong took over tutor games uh, a while ago he's making the game he has some uh, some great ideas for the game. He's he's making it modern. He's trying to make it current. So um, he's hoping next year he'll have games. Believe it or not, where the bases will run straight right out of the game. So that that might be a game changer in some ways, at least to get young people back in, in wait, interested. Wait, in wait, wait, wait. Say that again. Yeah, he's 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 got it. He's, he's designing a base, and he's got the design that it will run straight out of the box. So you will have to make it turn. That will be the thing. It, so they'll they'll all run straight. You'll have eleven guys running right down the field. You're already making me get goosebumps. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, there's going to be, uh, and he's, there's also a Tudor convention in Philadelphia in uh, in January, the week before the Super Bowl. So they're going to kick off really re- re-wrapping or unwrapping electric football again. Yeah, I mean, uh, Doug Strom really, he's he's seen it. Um, he's going to move away from the way it looked, and he's going to modernize it, and there's a remote control for it that he's, they're, they're working on. And, um, yeah, he's, he's trying to make it so it's contemporary and will appeal to young people now and uh, be easier for us to play as old guys, too. Is he including you a little bit in this, uh, this design? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not including the design. No, no, he's, he's doing it on his own, and uh, he's... Nope. He, he just t- talks to me every so often and says, we got this going, or what do you think? And I'll say, that sounds great. So, What's one thing that somebody that, that may have played electric football, but they have not read that book, what are some things they could glean from reading your book? Um, just how tied it was to the NFL. That uh, I, I really think that, uh, the, and also the fact that there wasn't a lot of NFL items at the time when NFL electric football was available in 1967, so it was really to have a miniature NFL for yourself was a big deal. To, to have a game on your floor with your own teams, it gave you a, it was a powerful and personal relationship with the NFL, which it sounds kind of trite today and, and a little naive, but but that was it, that, that, and that's what they were setting out to accomplish with with the game, and it it, it did it in a bigger way than I think they ever dreamed of. Well, I'll be honest with you. I love the book. I think it's you're you're right. Your your designer did a fabulous job. Talk to me about how somebody out there listening is going to be able to get a copy of this thing. Um, it's it's online. You can get it at any of the online retailers. Is it okay, I mention them. Yeah. 
Okay, you can get on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com or it's at Books a Million. Uh, we are a small publisher, so the, the big bookstores do not um, easily carry us on their shelves. But you can go into a Barnes & Noble and you can order us, or any bookstore really should be able to order us. You walk in and say you want to order The Unforgettable Buzz, uh, you can do that. Or you can go to our webpage, TheUnforgettableBuzz.com, and there's a link right to Amazon on the page. And also, we uh, we put Bob Hayes up there today for uh, to honor you guys. So we have uh, Bob Hayes running away from some old Browns on our webpage today. Anytime we can run away from the Browns, we're good with that. <laughs> well, what's up next for you now? You've got this thing done. You and Roddy have finished this 15-year monstrosity, if you will, of putting this whole thing together. What do you do now? We are going to have a color book, not of this. It's going to be a color book with mostly photos and some descriptions of the captions. We're going to pick the coolest things that we think are in the book that need to be seen in color, like the ice bowl game prototype that was never made, and, and some of these other things. And we're we're going to have a section of the book with um, we have players that you know they're old players that we've collected, but back in the day somebody put number thirty two on our brown. So we have we're going to have a hall of fame section of teams of players that people numbered themselves so uh, we're, we're getting creative with what we got and we're gonna next year we're gonna have a color book are you, are you guys running around doing a little book touring uh, a little bit yeah we've been to richmond and, and some other things but just just a little bit are, are you meeting a whole bunch of guys who are just ate up like we are about this yeah it, it, it really hits on the gut level too and it, the reaction to the book has been wonderful it really has it that that connection that was made with those teams, even if you didn't get the game to succeed greatly, it, it, there really is a connection to that time period and, and to these NFL players and NFL games. It's a walk down memory lane, no doubt about it. Earl Shores, thank you so much again. It's great talking to you again. Best of luck on selling this thing, and, and we're going to do our best, our, our best to try to help you guys out, okay? Uh, we can't, I can't say enough, Chuck. Thank you so much. No problem. You take it easy now. All right, thank you. All right, Earl Shores, he's the man who's responsible, the unforgettable buzz. We're going to come back. I'll talk a little bit more about what we saw inside the book that we didn't get a chance to visit with with Earl. And uh, we'll wrap up the show about 20 minutes till 7 o'clock, heading for home. Fox Sports Radio 1400, Fox Sports Texture Canada.